Sorry, I almost forgot what I was going to do. Um, try filming this. Something different. So the project is a uh, choke. As uh, probably some of you know, I'm, I'm struggling with the 80 meters getting into everything in the shack. So I did a little bit of YouTubing last night uh, about chokes. Um, I'll use an 8 mil bit there just to, uh, to uh, see if I can't come up with a solution. So, uh, you can see my lovely messy workshop, which I've kind of given up trying to clean up at the moment uh, because uh, just struggling <laughs> to find time and um, yeah, that should do the job. I really don't know uh, what I'm doing here. Uh, video will probably be crap, but that's alright. Uh, somebody might get uh, some information out of it. So basically, all my research says that uh, I'm looking at about, in the old money, 20 feet worth of coax wrapped around this, uh, this puppy, which uh, for us right-thinking people, um, works out at about 6.1 meters of, uh, of coax. So all I'm doing at the moment is a couple of entry holes, entry meters holes for the, uh, the coax and uh, a couple of cable tie points just to try and keep it all uh, neat and tidy. Um, yeah, I don't care if it gets a little bit loose. Uh, and I, uh, because I've got such a short run from the bottom of the auto tuner uh, that's bolted to the back of the house, I decided I'm just going to uh, replace the entire feed line of RG58. And yes, I know there is going to be a heap of loss with that. Um, but over the extra three or four metres I'm going to run, I am prepared to accept that. Because it's really not going to damage me that far. Now, before I get too far into that, I need to get my box. Uh, 4,000 cable ties that I've collected. Every time I uh, can't find cable ties, I go and buy more, and then I find the ones that I, uh, I couldn't find in the first place. <laughs> Which I'm sure most of us have done in the past. Oh, no. Now, I might actually change my mind halfway through here. Uh, and. Um, put uh, some extra cable ties down the body but at the moment I just want to uh, have it so I can secure it and if it needs to be tightened up I might rebuild it later but at the moment for an experiment I'm not putting a great deal of uh, time and energy into this uh, if it works then I, uh, I might look at redoing this with uh, a better quality coax and maybe putting it into a bit of a weatherproof uh, type arrangement. Uh, I've also discovered that I've made a uh, tactical error, but I'll deal with that at the end because I've got about three meters of coax, two meters of coax to feed through when I'm done. Um, really, really quick and simple this. Um, and hopefully it'll solve my problem. Uh, in the meantime, I've also uh, ordered uh, what I've been led to believe will be the appropriate size ferrite uh, ring. Uh, and we'll, um, we'll look at wrapping one around a ferrite core as well to, uh, to get that. Uh, some of the research from a guy in the UK models that um, unless you use a ferrite core these open core air wound chokes um, are useless down at 80 meters um, they only give about 
a bit over 500 ohms of resistance or impedance I should say uh, of course we'll talk about impeding the, um, the back bed RF uh, however at this point in time I'll take what I can get um, of course uh, unless I'm running about 20 watts on 80 meters I'm, I'm destroying half the, of the internet in the house uh, I've managed to choke down a lot of the interference just with the uh, ferrite rings on the um, the coax and the power lead at the back of the uh, radio but um, now before I get too carried away here I'll feed this other cable tie in and this is the point where on video I'll drop everything the whole thing will come unspun and I'll have to start again uh, just to make a tool of myself but no it looks like I might actually get away with that okay so um, I've got one wrapper coax through there which is a mistake I will actually terminate get rid of that I'll dispose of that one I'll bang this one in that I brought as an extra okay and then just run this last couple of wraps through okay there we go so that can come through there Make sure it didn't leave too much behind, that's alright. Hopefully I've left enough to uh, to get through uh, down to the radio. <clears throat> if I haven't, I'll just put a patch lead in there for now until we uh, see if it's going to work or not. A little bit of loss through a, uh, a small patch lead. Uh, I find I can live with as well. Um, I'm more interested in the, um, the choking effect. Um, so yeah, there we go. All right, the rest is just uh, a couple of PL259s. I spared everybody the excitement of me recycling uh, some PL259s. The joys about solder on connectors, you can usually uh, recover them. Because they're um, not exactly cheap. I ordered a few off uh, eBay the other day and um, to say that they were, uh, well I was a bit uh, concerned about buying off eBay anyway because you never know the quality you're getting but um, the issue I had was that um, the budget's a bit tight at the mini so uh, you've got to, uh, that's Actually, I can't all the way through there. Not quite how I wanted that to go, and that's why I always leave heaps of extra. Because when you have a misfire with your uh, with your coax, I'll just run that around once to score everything. There we go. That's better. That's much better. Um, yeah. The. Uh, I pay five dollars twenty-five for them each, uh, and then the other retailers I could find uh, for PL two five nines to fit RG two one three, of course, um, were all up around the ten, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, even sixteen dollar range. Um, so uh, I had to compromise and uh, and take what I could get off eBay, but. Even so, uh, buying from some of these uh, storefronts, you never know if they're um, just buying them in bulk off these cheap Chinese suppliers anyway, and you're still uh, paying a premium price and getting crap. Okay.
things. This is the fun part of these uh, connectors. Getting them all the way on down past the braid. There we go. Righto. I'll just uh, run that in the old uh, alligator hand. Okay, here's number one. Okay, now here we have the world's cheapest, nastiest multimedia you could possibly find. Uh, but I can't find my good one at the moment because I um, still have an unfinished pack and unfinished, unfinished packing. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, unfinished pack and all my crap. Uh, but that is... Beautiful, that's uh, open. Habit I got into uh, when I was working at police transport, heading out police cars years ago. Check every connector. Check them as you go, not at the end. Of course, if you get one that's got a short on it and you've done both of them, you're not going to know which one it is and you've got to mess around trying to figure it out. Um, which basically means cutting one off the end. And uh, with the 50% rule, I reckon I would have cut the wrong one off every single time. Righto. I don't know if you can see that at all either. When I peeled that back, I've got one single strand of copper. So all the new people out there, that is enough to cause a lovely short circuit. So you've got to make sure that they all disappear. And I am by no means an expert at any of this. Uh, so, just making it up as I go along. Uh, trim that back. Cut that massively too long, but that doesn't matter. That's why I always leave a little bit extra. insulation all the way off that time. I normally drag it just to the end so I can give it a bit of a twist up so you don't get any stray strands caught, particularly with these type of uh, connectors. They've got a bit of a, a gap in the middle of them there, a bit of an air gap. Uh, you can sometimes uh, peel off a stray piece of conductor on this multi-strand conductor and it will do exactly what a stray piece of braid will do and cause a short. Alright, and just have a look there. It looks like it's all the way through. Alright, Trying to get that hot enough that everything slinks down and uh, gets a good solid connection in there. 
rather than just soldering on the surface at the end. I want a bit of, bit of solder right down in the middle. There's a little bit of braid hanging out there. I'm not too stressed because beef, both ends of this is going to be uh, protected. The short end is going uh, in through the coax, uh, in through the um, the auto tuner, uh, and this end's going into the patch panel into the uh, into the house, which is under cover as well. So I'm not real worried about them getting anything in. I'll just uh, check for a short on this one and make sure that we're. Good to go. Firstly, make sure the case is good, and then center pins are open. My uh, decent moly meter actually just buzzes at me, and I don't have to listen to the look at the screen. But uh, I couldn't find it. So twenty dollars from uh, Super Cheap Auto. If I'd had time to wait to buy another one, I would have bought one online. And uh, but this will do. And uh, when I find my decent one, this will go in the box in the back of the car. All right, there we have it. Um, one air wound choke. Uh, I've been reliably informed they are not a bellon. Uh, so the term ugly bellon, whilst it's ugly, uh, is not a bellon because it doesn't actually balance anything. It's just a, uh, a basically a great big air wound resistor or air cord resistor. All right, here we go.